the rocky, cliff-bound shore of Northern Ireland. Two young boys were exploring this cave when they were caught out by a fast-rising tide. After hours of being unable to get through the incoming surf, they were at risk of both hypothermia and a very real danger of drowning. They needed rescuing urgently. The Coast Guard rang me to say that two kids had been missing for several hours on the beach at uh, Castle Rock and uh, requested a boat. Um, between myself and Coast Guard, we decided to lodge the two boats, the ALB and the ILB. As I drove down into Castle Rock, I seen the helicopter uh, and then I seen the lifeboat out on the, on, the, on the water. And then as we turned the corner, a huge crowd up in the, up in the hill. And I just thought to myself, this is a major uh, air sea re operation. They were there six, seven minutes yeah, they were after, after the I made call. that call. And then to reassure me, they were saying, look, and there was the boat coming around yeah. the pier. And I was just, right, right. During that time, the uh, cliff rescue teams from the Coast Guard were putting uh, men down the cliffs. And the first one was down further to the west, and he had checked the bigger cave, which had no joy, there was nothing there. And then the, the middle cave, which was sort of the middle-sized cave, it, the guy was down there, he, eventually he got a response. The Coast Guard told us oh. about roughly, about approximately eight o'clock, he says, if we don't get them out before nine, and, the, and if we don't get them out the next hour, we won't get them, and the tide doesn't turn until midnight. Mm. The radio went silent. We realised that none of the other agencies could help these two young lads. It became quite apparent that it was down to us. We thought about veering down, but the swell was just too much. We couldn't have, if we veered down, we couldn't have got into the cave anyway. Uh, Anthony came up with a great idea of putting a man in the water with a heaving line and trying to get him to float down into the cave. And we tried that with Carl, we put Carl in the water. I jumped in the water, started swimming towards the cave, but I don't think I even got halfway before I started getting dragged by the boat again. I think the D jacket changed things a lot. I think it was probably far too buoyant for the job. I had been watching this going on for a while. I, mean, I had an idea that I would uh, use an ALB life jacket, just uh, remove the uh, automatic head off it. So I disarmed the uh, automatic head, took the automatic head off. I got cut it up in the dry suit and uh, got into the ALB. And Jerry got me in near his jumping distance. I had a spare life jacket and a helmet with me, which was causing quite a drag. And so I only left me really with one arm to sort of try and swim with. And uh, I'm actually trying to hold on. I was, I was able to get a, well, a bit of a grip with the arm with the LB jacket, with the jacket on it, but uh, I still wasn't getting a great grip with others. I was only, actually only holding on with one arm each time, you know. And I started kicking and making my way towards the entrance. And all I was doing was trying to swim Hold on when the surges were coming out, and then as the surge came again, let go and swung, and then as it eased off, I would get a hold of a rod or something and try and hold myself in position so I wasn't get A few times that I lost my grip and sort of ended up back to where I started at, you know, and I had to start again. And so it just gradually worked my way right to the back of the cave. Down there in a t-shirt and shorts, no shoes, bare feet, just, and they were quite cold. And uh, and then I, that was another decision that had to be made: which one came, and which one stayed. We made the decision between ourselves in there, and the decision was made that Matthew would go first. He just kind of strapped the ropes on, just and said, "Come on here with me," and kind of just swam us out of the cave individually. Well, I got Matthew kitted up. I put the life jacket on him. I put the helmet on him and I, I briefed him about if we were going to make our way out off the, down this shingle beach. I'm going to have my arm and around the back of the life jacket. I want you to kick with me. You'll feel my legs kick and you kick in time with me so we're not kicking each other. And we just sort of walk backwards and all of a sudden drop, you're gone. A few times we had to use our feet to kick ourselves away from the rocks because the, the, the surges were coming in, they were pushing us, always pushing us across to the far side of the cave. I just kept kicking and kicking and kicking, and we swam our way out towards the entrance. It was grand, it was good to know he was okay. We knew after being six hours in the cave, they must have been mildly hypothermic, so we knew time was of the essence in getting them reheated. So at that time, we um, 
approached Anthony and took Matthew aboard and then passed Matthew onto the Y boat in which they took him back to the Severn class. And we did that because we wanted to keep an eye on Anthony going back in again because we knew this is where he was going to start getting tired, so we had to keep an eye on him. I was taking my time all the time, you know, and uh, I was holding on. And when I did get there, I actually said to Reese that you have to hold on a it because I was sort of exhausted at this stage. I got him under the life jacket and the helmet, and we, uh, then that it's just the exact same thing again. I told him that we were going to go walk out. When we did get to the, just outside the entrance of the cave, Jared had made his way in. At that time, the swelling started to die down a bit, and we were getting more used to the sets and waves. We got into the cave. We were pretty much in the main body of the cave, and Anthony had swam down from the end of it, and we got the young fellow into the, the boat. And we got Anthony and it's quite relieved that we'd come in. So we got a young fella doing a lifeboat with Anthony and uh, the helicopter left the two in the hospital. It wasn't like someone swung pull, it was a lot tougher and we wouldn't have been able to do it without Anthony pulling us along. I think if that night if Anthony hadn't done what he'd done and the time he'd done it, the result might have been a lot different because we still had maybe three quarters in our rising tide and the two kids in the cave, the water was coming over their heads at that time with the swell. So, you know, it could have been a whole different scenario if Anthony hadn't acted when and how he did, you know. He's totally capable to do anything, and I'm well aware of that now, so I'd trust him with my life any time, any day of the week. Anthony saved them, and we... we owe everything um, to him. We owe him our son's lives. We really do. He's one brave man.